the Kansas City Chamber uh, d- decided that they wanted to formulate the big five, five ideas that would lead that would that would lead Kansas City in the next X amount of years, 20, 30, 40 years. And they boiled down 400 ideas from community members all the way down to five. And one of them was to make Kansas City uh, America's most entrepreneurial city, right? Quote, unquote, America's most entrepreneurial city. What the hell does that even mean, right? I mean, how can anything be most entrepreneurial? Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you for joining us today for the 1004 Show. We're here with Matthew Marcus of the KC Startup Foundation. What's going on, Matthew? Not much, much, man. Just just, uh, got my coffee brewing, you know, and then just waking waking up here in Kansas City. City. There you go. Will the Royals win the World Series in 2017? We're starting starting things hard with these questions. I'm 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 not going to go to Vegas and put any big money on that bet. Okay. Um, I love my Royals, but I don't know about this year. Okay. Are you you born and raised in KC? I was actually born in New Mexico uh, and then raised here since I was a wee type. I I try and ask the hardest questions here. Is Kansas City barbecue the best? Hands down. I mean, it's fantastic. What makes it so good? Uh, man, I think it's, uh, I mean, the sauces are different. Um, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I, 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 I love barbecue. I'll eat any barbecue. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I feel like we gotta, we, you gotta hold the crown for something like this. So, so some would say that those first two questions have no basis on a business community, a startup community, but I actually think that they have a huge piece to it. I think that when you have, um, a big sports team, like the Royals, or you have a food that's iconic, like barbecue, um, they can really help um, accelerate and let people know about kind of the city, whether it's Kansas City or, or somewhere else. How do you guys incorporate um, kind of what you guys are good at and known for into the startup community? I think it starts with just hometown pride. Um, you know, the two things that you mentioned, barbecue, uh, sports, Royals, Chiefs, you know, whatever it might be. The, the reason that resonates with people, I think, mostly is because it's hometown pride. It's, it's something that represents them um, distinctly from other communities or other cities. And that's something that we try to weave into the startup community as well. I remember early on when we were kind of building Kansas City and there was a, a lot of hype around what was happening in Kansas City. A lot of the questions we got over and over was, is Kansas City the next Silicon Valley? And our answer is no, there is no other Silicon Valley. Kansas City is the next Kansas City. And the reason is, is because you get to weave in all of these unique characteristics. Why do people try and be, so they do it here in, in, in Norfolk, in the beach. Um, they do it everywhere. They try and say, are you the next New York? Are you the next Boston? Are you the next Silicon Valley? Why do people act like that? Why, why in your line of work have, have you seen that people continue to ask that question over and over again? I think it's because it's, it's something that they're used to. It's something that they can compare. If, you know, when you're starting something completely new, let's say totally out of the box, uh, and you try to explain it to someone, what they immediately try to do is compare it to something that they can relate to. So I think when it comes to startup communities, um, you know, the Silicon Valley is the kind of first and foremost, and then you got New York and you got these other cities that have popped up, something that they're familiar with. So they try to incorporate, oh, you know, what about you is going to be the next X, Y, Z? Um, when in reality, I mean, every community is different and, and these community and these startup communities and the ecosystems have so many, so many different components that literally you can't be the next. Matthew, tell me a little bit about, about why you guys started KC Startup Foundation and, and how it supports entrepreneurs and, and how you guys kind of found that there's a hole that maybe you guys could fill. Yeah, so uh, quite honestly, the, my whole journey into startup community building was very serendipitous and unplanned. Uh, you know, I found Startup Life back in 2010. I was always kind of entrepreneurial minded, but found Startup Life um, from a true perspective in 2010. Uh, built a startup, came back to that was in Boulder, Colorado. Came back to Kansas City and was kind of trying to figure out what was next, and serendipitously ended up kind of co-founding the Kansas City Startup Village. <clears throat> which just happened to be a part of town in Midtown Kansas City where three properties fired up with startup activity uh, within a couple blocks of one another, all unplanned, and in the first neighbor in the world to get Google Fiber. And so we started to cultivate this thing, and it was really exciting, and 
we started to invite other entrepreneurs to come join us and you know three properties led to 15 properties and six startups led to 51 startups and you know some startups got funding and then jobs were created and then visitors came to see this kind of crazy thing called the KNC Startup Village and kind of two years into it um, it became like a second job I mean we were trying to build our startup at the same time we were trying to grow the village and, and keep the keep the momentum going um, and we just realized that from a volunteer perspective which is what it always was and always really has been it just wasn't sustainable um, someone or someone's needed to get paid to do this it was really adding um, to kind of Kansas City's economic prosperity in some degree some form of fashion so uh, that's when we originally thought about converting the village to a nonprofit but we didn't want to lose this grassroots organic community that's, that was co-led and, and very unique. So we started the Kansas City Startup Foundation um, to kind of sit alongside of it. You said something there that I think a lot of people and maybe the position that you're in, maybe that I'm in, kind of startup leaders across the, the country, we forget about making money. Or we forget mm. that we need to get paid for that. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> why... Why is that such a hard thing for people to, to kind of grasp that, hey, by the way, like this, uh, this thing is really important and we need it, but by the way, I have to make sure that I can fulfill for my family and, and the duties that are necessary there? Uh, well, I think that's just it. I mean, you know, as they say, money makes the world go round uh, for right or for wrong. It's a necessary thing. Um, it's what we use to live our lives, to provide for our family, to do what we do. And, um, you know, there's only so many hours in a day, so you've got to really balance the uh, time that you earn the money and then the time that you spend that money to live your life. Um, you know, when, when we were doing this originally, it was, I've always kind of classified it in the philanthropic bucket. You know, one of my personal goals is to eventually be a professional philanthropist um, and just whatever money I make over my lifetime, I'm able to give it away and support other causes. Uh, so I've always classified my work with the Kansas City Startup Village and originally with the Kansas City Startup Foundation um, just as volunteer, as just giving back to the community that's given so much to me over my life. Um, and uh, and so it was cool, but eventually it was like, wow, I'm really bleeding financially. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm, money's going out but not coming in. So uh, thankfully, we, we've built this organization into a position where, you know, I can get paid something to kind of keep the dream alive. Um, and I think just people forget that you've got to, you know, you've got to think about um, your own well-being, your, only, your, 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 own, your family's own well-being as well. Sure. I completely understand that world for the first two years when I started Hatch. Um, did not make a lot of money. Um, didn't really have a business model at all. Um, and was doing very similar things. And um, had that moment where I was like, you know what, like, we have to figure this out. And so we did. Um, which is and you know what's interesting on that piece, just to extend upon it, is when you talk to other individuals, you know, and organizations about um, the work that you're doing. There's an educational component to help them explain or to help them understand why it's valuable work. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times, they look at us and go, "It's like Keystone Cops. What's going on there?" Um, you know, why should we support this thing? Is it really helpful? Is it going to hurt us rather than help us, et cetera, et cetera? And you've really got to paint this picture uh, and, and help them understand that that growing this, that growing the startup community, that, that um, expanding the startup ecosystem, helping it flourish actually is a rising tide that lifts all the boats. So I, that's, that's a great point. So I remember that when we were trying to do things similar um, in – in the past, we would say, hey, you know, if you can just carve off some of this money that you were giving to the arts or to something like that, um, that was a good conversation. Um, but it is difficult because people are like, well, why, why would I do this? And so we don't have a ton of Fortune 500s here. Um, and so a lot of times that's where people go to, to find that kind of support. But it's just interesting to hear that you guys had to figure out how to have that conversation as well to, you know, start carving out some money for the small business community that um, you guys don't know about. And, and as entrepreneurship has gotten, you know, become basically a, a buzzword and it's become one of the hottest things in the world. Entrepreneurship now people think is an industry. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how I don't believe that. I don't know how entrepreneurship can be an industry. But people are saying that. And so it's interesting to see um, you guys had similar 
kind of pieces with that. Kansas City is very dense with entrepreneurs, or at least it appears to be that way. Um, you guys with the startup village, um, was that just a bunch of co-working spaces? What was kind of the breakdown of that? Uh, so the village itself is centered around a small commercial district. Uh, it's literally midtown Kansas City, so it's not downtown Kansas City, Missouri, but it's not the suburbs either. It's kind of nicely positioned. The commercial district is a historic antiques and arts district, so kind of as opposite as you can get from tech startups and, and technology. Um, so I think it's very interesting that you get this blend, but very small commercial district, um, literally based on state line roads. So half of the village is in the state of Missouri and half of it is in the state of Kansas. And when I say state line road, we're talking a two lane road, really just, you know, easy, uh, easy, easy road to, to traverse. Um, but yeah, so you've got residential neighborhoods surrounding this commercial district and, you know, some of the some of the entrepreneurs work and live in the homes. Some of them work in homes. Some of them work in the commercial spaces. Um, it, the village itself is not a place where uh, a large startup could base themselves. There's not big office buildings or anything like that. We've always viewed the village as a place where startups start up. So a lot of the teams that come to us are one, two, three person startups, and then the goal is that they graduate. That's what we call a, 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 a startup that started in the village or came to the village small, outgrew the village, or, or um, experienced an opportunity elsewhere where they could continue to grow and prosper. So by outgrowing the village, that is literally, and I know you just said this, it is finding a different place to prosper, or they've, they've outgrown it because they need to go to a, a bigger space. So right. the metric that you guys are tracking there is person came in and they graduated because they went from three employees to, what, what's that next kind of, how many employees does it usually need to, to graduate? I mean, you know, you could, you could have, there's spaces that you could have a, a 10 to 15 person team comfortably. Um, once you get to the 20 or 30, you've really got to find another spot. Um, but you're right. That's what we track. We track the companies that graduate. We like to track jobs as well. Jobs are tough to track because jobs come and go. And it's just you've really got to keep your finger on the pulse with that metric. But we can track the companies that are in the village and those that that move on. And one of the goals for us is, you know, Kansas City seven years ago when startups were making progress, we didn't have a great investment landscape. We didn't have a sound community. And many of them left. They felt their only next step was the valley or the coast or some other bigger startup ecosystem. What now we're in a Kansas City is in a position where you don't. It, let's say you're in the village. Once you graduate, you just go to another part of Kansas City that has more space, yeah. um, which is pretty cool, I think. How do you guys define startup? So I define startup as a uh, rapidly uh, scaling, high, high growth, disruptive. Um, business <clears throat> and one that you know expands beyond the locale of which it's based knowing that you guys are tracking jobs and graduation graduation appears to have a very strong piece to the growth of jobs in the company and that technology is changing and maybe the size of a business is shrinking because they don't have to have as many jobs how are you guys kind of evolving into that world knowing that historically a company might needed might have needed hundreds or thousands of employees, but now they might be able to get away with that with dozens of employees. How do yeah. you guys kind of evolve into that world? Well, I mean, I think, you know, every business is unique in its own right. So you can literally have a Craigslist situation where you're a million, multi-million dollar organization with 30 employees or something like that. Um, so I think it's just different for each employee. But, um, you know, what we're trying to do is blend this new this next generation economic development with the old school economic development and how kind of the traditional organizations view economic development and how we view it. A lot of them view it as jobs, uh, how many jobs were created, et cetera. Jobs are awesome. We want people to have jobs, but we all know that with the, uh, the increase in automation and all those things that yeah. jobs are becoming less and that you can do more with less individuals. So for us, it's like what kind of prosperity can you get beyond just um, those traditional metrics? How, you know, yeah. The economic, the actual city-led economic development, um, employee, staff, teams. How do they interact with kind of the new school mentality? Um, it seems like some communities across the country, 
embrace it a lot. Some are very like, nope, this is not this is not our world. How how is it in Kansas City? It's it's good actually. Um, so like the economic economic development um, EDC of Kansas City, uh, they're fantastic. They even not only do they support the community and understand that it needs support, but they've even launched their own initiatives, which I think other communities are starting to say, wow, maybe we need to bring that um, to our commute to our city. Uh, one of which, so EDC KC a couple years ago launched Launch KC, mm -hmm. which is a literally non uh, dilutive. Um, equity-free grant um, contest where uh, the winning companies can get 50 grand um, to further their company, free office space in Kansas City, Missouri, um, and, and they get applications from all around the world. And, and this year, because it's been so successful, they're upping the, the dollars. I think the grand champion gets 100 grand now. Um, so it's literally like giving money away, so to speak, but it's, it's helping startups um, to realize Kansas City is the place to be. So they're, they're very supportive. You know, the chambers are supportive. What's interesting for us is, you know, we're dealing with two governments, two sides of the state lines. You've got Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, Kansas City, Missouri seems to be um, ahead of the ball, ahead of the game. Kansas City, Kansas, just because it's smaller, um, it's not the, the, the highlight of, you know, that their downtown is much different than Kansas City, Missouri's downtown. So I think they're still getting up to speed, but um, we have to play the balance of the two, two governments, so to speak. How, how, how much of a challenge is that, though, the actual like, bureaucracy or the government side of it, where, mm. I mean, there's state lines involved? Like, is that, is that a big challenge? Do you guys just kind of not think about it a lot? Or what is, what's yeah, the landscape of that? It, it can be a challenge. I mean, with the village, uh, when we first started it, we, we didn't know what we were doing, so we didn't really ask for permission or look at regulations or zoning laws and all that stuff. We just did, right? As entrepreneurs do, you just do. Um, and then it, you know, we got into a little hot water with some breaking some zoning regs and some of the um, some of the local uh, residents weren't too happy with parking issues, you know, because couple when well, we had one company get to 30 employees before they finally jettisoned. I mean, they were really packed in. Um, so, again, the infrastructure just wasn't there. We've, we've since worked through those issues, so we're all good. But um, when we look at the bigger picture, so with the Kansas City Startup Foundation, and, we're, and, the, and just to backtrack, the Kansas City Startup Foundation um, is helping Kansas City's startup ecosystem overall, whereas uh, the village is just kind of one part of, of, sure. of town. Um, so with the Kansas City Startup Foundation, um, you know, certainly there's a, that, again, that educational component when you're talking to corporations, when you're talking to government, when you're talking to even schools, sometimes you really have to ho hold some hands a little bit, but at least guide them to say, hey, this is an important thing to be, and also just keep them updated. Obviously, like take government, for example, the startup ecosystem might, may or may not be super important to them, but they have to overlook the whole city overall. They've got a lot of things to deal with. So it's really up. To, so what we do is we make sure that we're a liaison and we keep them updated uh, about what's happening in the ecosystem, how they can support it. Um, heck, we even have government um, uh, officials on our board of directors for the foundation. And that was by design because we wanted them to have a seat at the table to um, to talk it through. How, how do you update them? How often and, and what's the medium that you do it? Uh, so we have gone to city council meetings and we've done presentations. Um, we have them on our newsletter list so they, they get the newsletters. Uh, we'll sometimes call them and invite them to events. So one of the things that the foundation really focuses on is the culture of Kansas City startup ecosystem and how do you maintain that so that it's uh, a vibrant, exciting place to be. Um, so we, we'll put on events, right? Uh, next month, we've got One Week KC, which is a week-long celebration of Kansas City's uh, startup ecosystem, startup community. And so we reach out to all these individuals, whether they're government, whether they're a corporation, whether they're investors, whether they're um, you know school uh, and civic leaders, and say, hey, come out, come enjoy, come meet people, come uh, learn about what's, you know, what's happening, and, and just keep them constantly engaged, constantly connected. I'm going to make a big assumption. You're familiar with Brad Feld and the startup community book. Totally. So, that's, that's, yeah. Um, I actually have it right here. Um, one thing that I think is important and, um, a lot of communities don't live by this. I think is it for something to be entrepreneur led. Mm. How does that, how do you define that? Um, and how do you ensure that things that you're seeing, like a, another, like the launch KC that the EDC does, that that still is 
is going to be the good for the entrepreneurs. Mm. So love that book. Love Brad Feld. Ironically, again, more serendipity when the villa when when we kind of founded the village and we put the stake in the ground and we said, okay, now what do we do? Because none of us knew what to do. Brad literally had just published that book, and we went to Coffin Foundation for One Million Cups. And they were handing this book out just for free because Brad and the Coffin Foundation have a good relationship. Yep. And we literally got this book and we're like, well, wow, we read it. We're like, this is literally the guidelines for what we're trying to do with this village thing. And so entrepreneur led first and foremost, right? That's rule number one. That's what we did with the village. Mm -hmm. We made it all inclusive. We made sure that there were events that in incorporated the entire uh, entrepreneurial stack. And we said, everyone here is a co-leader. Literally, there is no president, vice president. You don't have to ask permission. Just do good by the community and let's see what happens. You don't have to ask any permission to do anything. Um, so we literally, um, we live by that rule uh, with the village. Now, when you look at the foundation or the entire uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem, one of the things I think Kansas City does really well is that the community members that really um, are engaged and connected with the community itself, they are starting their own initiatives and some are successful, some aren't, just like anything that gets started. Um, but a lot of people feel so inspired by Kansas City and being a part of the community that they are starting up their own initiatives and just inviting others to be a part of it. And not one you know, government, not one corporation, no one has come in to try to grab it and say, oh, we own it, right? We're all just kind of stewarding this community together. Um, and largely, it's being done by entrepreneurs, so it really is entrepreneur-led. In the village... Um well, maybe not in the village, but Brad had bought a house that was a Google Fiber house. Was that in the village? It is, yeah. Okay. Um, now, how did that kind of come about? Um... Yeah, so um, funny story, actually. So one of the first three properties uh, in the village was called Homes for Hackers. Um, local web guy just came up with this harebrained idea, uh, which turned into Homes for Hackers, which turned into free rent for three months at a time for any entrepreneur that wanted to apply to the program and live in the house. And uh, I believe his name was Ben Barrett, and I believe Ben was at Big Iowa, which was a Silicon Prairie news event, yep. and Brad Feld was there, and they got to talking, and Ben told him about the village and told him how we are kind of basing it off his book, and Brad thought that was really cool, and he said, how can I support? And we said, well, we've got so many inquiries of people that want to move their startups here, but we've got nowhere to put them. Like, we need more space. He said, well, what if I bought a house there? We thought they said that would be really cool, and he bought this house sight unseen, wow. um, and had it you know just refurbed inside and out, uh, and Google Fiber connected it, and it's been it's had quite a story. So I don't think you're crazy, but I think a lot of things that you're saying, a lot of people would sit there and say, "This is crazy. How mm -hmm. can you build something for the future that you don't know what it is? Um, it, you put some people in a house, like it, things are just going to happen. Like it just it it seems it seems ludicrous." Yeah. But you've seen it, and you've seen it a lot of different places. Like, how can someone listening understand that, like, this is a long journey, yeah, and that something good will happen at to uh, from this, and it might not be what we think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're right. It is ludicrous to think. Uh... This could have been, if you had asked me five years ago that I would even be part of a community, I would have laughed and said, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but you're right. It is a it is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Uh, even in Brad's book, he says you have to have a continually um, engaged 20-year vision, 20-year journey, uh, and, you know, looking down the road. Uh, but the cool thing is, is that, you know, the village, no one could have architected this thing the way it's played out. No one could have planned for this thing. It Something wanted this to be. Uh, we were just, we've just been stewards of it, but it, you know, with, as with anything, you got to take the first step, right? If you're going to go run a marathon, take the first step, then take another step and you're going to get there and something's going to happen. Trust in that the why, right? What's the why that you're doing this, taking something from Simon Sinek, um, and believe in it, trust in it and just say, okay, let's see where this thing takes us. Let's see how it evolves. Uh, know that you don't, like I've no, none of us ever have ever considered that we've owned the village. We again, we're always just stewards of it. Know that it doesn't belong to you, and that you're just helping to guide it. Uh, and if it's meant to be, it will be. If it's not, um, like other things, it won't be. But just give it a go. Believe it and go. I love that. When 
you were in Boulder. What did you do there? You had a company there? Yep. Uh, we started a startup called Kula, K-U-L-A Causes. What did in, that do? Uh, the idea was to democratize corporate giving, corporate philanthropic giving. So uh, a good example would be Walmart. Uh, Walmart gives a lot of money away to, to charities uh, every year. But who dictates where that those philanthropic dollars go? I believe it's the C-level execs or the board of directors or whoever that might be at the top. Uh, which charities do they decide upon? Well, it's the ones that mean the most to them, right? But the reason they have these millions and millions of dollars to give away is not is because of their customers. So we wanted to give those philanthropic dollars back to the customers um, so because they might have different uh, causes that mean something to them. Interesting. I think you said nine years ago you were – looking at KC and it didn't have a lot of the resources that it does now, whether that's mm-hmm. a more mature uh, venture field, just a lot more businesses, a lot more s- structure and collaboration. Not that structure is the word that entrepreneurs probably want to use. And you're only halfway, according to Brad Feld's book, of the 20 years. I, I actually met Brad once and I called him stupid, not stupid, crazy, for thinking it's a 20 year plan. We were two or three years into Norfolk and I was like, Oh, we, we got this. We're no way. He was, he was right. So yeah. if he's listening, Brad, you were right. But <laughs> it's like, that's a long time. Like that's two thirds of my life right now is 20 years. Like, like how, how do you, what is next then? Right? So you still have 11 years until this community is mature. Mm-hmm. Like what else is there to do? Well, that's what I think is that, you know, as you said, it could be a third, it could be who knows how much of your life that one might dedicate to this journey. Um, that's why it's, it's this thing is, is a way of life, right? It's not a thing in your life. It really is a way of life um, to be a startup community builder, to be a part of anything that is a 20 or 30 year mm-hmm. type of journey. You know, sometimes we'll laugh and say, how can you eat? We can't predict what's going to happen next week, let alone sure. next year, let alone two, 20 years. Um, a funny thing happened that kind of helped kick off Kansas City's startup community, which is um, the Kansas City Chamber uh, de- decided that they wanted to formulate the big five, five ideas that would lead that would that would lead Kansas City in the next X amount of years, 20, 30, 40 years. And they boiled down 400 ideas from community members all the way down to five. And one of them was to make Kansas City uh, America's most entrepreneurial city. Right. Quote, unquote, America's most entrepreneurial city. What the hell does that even mean, right? I mean, how can anything be most entrepreneurial? But just like with this 20-year vision, what I think it's turned in to be is a North Star, right? Okay, maybe we can never be the most entrepreneurial, but let's just try to be our best, right? And let's just keep going after that thing that feels always 10 years further down the road and 20 years further down the road. Uh, but, you know, God, seven years ago, the things that, I'm a, that we're, the community has and that we're a part of, didn't even exist like they literally the they just, they just did not exist so to look back and say wow look what we've accomplished in let's say seven years what can we do in the next seven yeah. if we yeah. really get focused about it how often accomplish- do you look back and say wow look at what we've done uh, pro- not often probably not often enough i mean honestly probably during talks like this when someone says tell us the history yeah. um you know kansas city's not one uh kansas Cityans aren't one to even toot their horn They're, there's a lot of humility and, and humbleness around here but to but, become well, the nation's number one entrepreneurial city you have to tout that because people have to believe it right <laughs> well that's true i mean you know I, I don't think people yell it from the mountaintops but i think people inherently believe it themselves that, Hey, we can be more and more entrepreneurial. Um, but, uh, yeah, but, uh, that, that's, I think it is important to celebrate successes along the way. Entrepreneurs struggle at this as well, right? They're always just trying to think what's next, what's next. And when something happens that is a notch up the ladder, they forget to say, Whoa, that's awesome. High fives around. Let's celebrate that thing. And now let's get back to work. One Week KC, our event next next month, is all about that. Hey, let's take a week out. Don't stop work completely, but let's step away from the computer. Let's get out. Let's lift our heads up. Let's go out and give each other high fives. Let's welcome new individuals into the community who have been curious and, and want to find out more um, and celebrate what we've accomplished so far. And then after that, hey, back to work. Let's crank. Let's hustle. It's a very cool name as well. Thank you. One Week KC talking with Matthew Marcus of the Casey Startup Foundation. 
So, do you think that there's been one big moment that has really helped to accelerate you guys? Or is it a series of small ones? So, hands down, Google choosing Kansas City to launch Google Fiber was a big deal. Um, you know, Google anything is kind of just synonymous with startup coolness and awesomeness and, and entrepreneurship, even though they're, I wouldn't think they're classified as a startup anymore, but you still look at Google and you think startup, right? Um, so when they chose Kansas City out of, what, 1,600 cities to bring their fiber service, it was almost like people kind of had to pinch themselves and say, and even the world was like, Kansas City? What the hell are they going to Kansas City for? And you know, even ourselves were like, well, how, is this really happening? And, um, and so I think it really just kind of, it, 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 it raised everyone's attention, including ourselves, to say, whoa, maybe we, there is something happening here. I mean, Google just chose us. Uh, the, you know, we got the big five initiative that says we're going to be the most entrepreneurial city in the in the America. Um, hey, let's let's go, let's do this thing. Um, but Google Fiber was was definitely a catalyst, not only just for the village, but for for Kansas City overall. I talked with uh, Adam Klein over at American Underground in in Raleigh Durham, and they are a <clears throat> campus for entrepreneurs in the uh, one of the Google for Entrepreneurs campuses, and they're one of nine. And they said that was a huge moment for them too. Um, you know, attaching themselves to Google, kind of like you guys in Fiber. So what do you guys do afterwards with that? So you get it. How yeah. do you then kind of, in a place where you guys don't like to toot your own horn, how do you start telling the world, like, hey, like, we are a place where, like, good things are happening? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, a few organizations popped up, a few initiatives popped up that started to say, hey, what? now that we, we're getting Google Fiber, now that we've got it, you know, depending on the timeline, um, hey, let's try this, let's try that, let's start this, let's start that. Uh, one of the uh, organizations that has spawned out of Google choosing Kansas City is KC Digital Drive, which is to literally say, How, we, hey, we are a gigabit connected city um, among a few others in America and a few others around the world. Um, let's make sure we capitalize the, on this as much as possible. And not only that, but let's, uh, you know, we have got a window of opportunity to kind of lead efforts to learn along the way and then share those lessons with other communities who are also interested in kind of firing up their cities is in the gigabit realm. Um, so thankfully we've had those organizations who say, Hey, cool things are happening. They put on every year, the gigabit city summit, uh, which is literally to invite other, um, you know, civic reps mm -hmm. and business leaders from around the country who are interested in the gigabit revolution, if you will, to come learn and come commune and convene and, and discuss things out. So that's just one thing, but um, God, we even, I, we, we threw together some fun stuff. I remember, so Chattanooga, they've had gigabit longer than we have, gigabit connectivity, and they've got a great startup community. And I remember thinking, we just got Google Fiber, we should probably connect with them in a cool way. And so we started this thing called the gig to gig uh, sessions, where literally we just brainstormed with some of their uh, you know thought leaders and some of ours, and just said, hey, what can we do to really showcase uh, to the world the power of the of the gig? So a lot of little things along the way have been, have been great. One great thing is you guys have um, the KC Startup Foundation resources where people can get the Hitchhiker's Guide to KC and the startup community. And our version of this has a lot of white space. <laughs> and so it's really cool to see you know, your big events and conferences, we might have one or two. And so you guys obviously having uh, a dozen plus is, is awesome. And then a ton of meetups. The Coffin Foundation is there and so many resources. Um, what is your favorite startup community in the country? Wow. Um, you can't man. answer Kansas City. No, I, you know, God, what's my favorite? Um I mean, I like Boulder. Mm -hmm. I think Boulder's a really cool one. Um, it's interestingly enough, when we were building our the first startup, we did we had a very, very little touch point with the community itself because we didn't know the power of the community. Um, but I, you know, once I've gone back since and I've had chance, opportunities to really plug in and meet some other individuals. But I think it's just a nice blend of. It's a small feel, right? It's not a huge city. Yep. Uh, it's not sprawling, uh, really. It's pretty somewhat dense. 
Um, very active, very uh, inspired individuals, very, and when I say active, very active individuals. They want to be out and about. You know, yeah. they live and breathe that mountain air and that, um, those physical activities. So I think you blend all that together and you've got a really nice um, lifestyle, a really nice place to be to not only live a fun, interesting life, but also be a part in, of a cool community and build your startup or, or help build the community. Yeah, I've been to Boulder once. Wild time, a lot of fun. Um, yeah. But dense, and you can do all of this, all of those things, and it's um, a, a lot of fun. Someone, a business owner that doesn't, your quote, understand the power of community. How can they start getting included in a community like KC, or just understand how important that power can be to the the growth of their business? Yeah, so we get a lot of inquiries at the foundation uh, with individuals who are like, hey, I kind of want to learn more, not really sure if it's for me, uh, if it will be helpful or whatnot. Literally have a templated email that we point them to a very a variety of different uh, resources, including that Hitchhiker's Guide that you made mention. Um, so, And the first thing we say is you got to get plugged in. You got to get engaged. Come to an event. Come shake someone's hand and see where it go- see what happens next. Um, it's not an overnight thing by any means, you know, they, you're not going to just plug in a community one week and all of a sudden you know everything and you know everybody and all that type of thing. It really is a, is a process, but, um, without a doubt, uh, plugging into the community and accessing other individuals and knowledge sharing is helpful for any business, whether it's a startup, um, whether it's a small main street business or whether it's a growth stage business. Every time you plug in, every time you take a moment out to go connect into the community, to go to an event, to um, you know, a- attend a-, a webinar that might be online or something, um, it's a chance to learn, it's a chance to connect, it's a chance to, um, to really get to know your fellow entrepreneurs, those people who are part of this community with you. The, you guys focus primarily on startups and you define them as rapidly scaling disruptive businesses. So for a business that isn't a startup or it doesn't fit into that world, what do you, where do you tell them to go and how do you kind of sift through in that initial communication with them that they are or not kind of your focus? Yeah. So we never leave anyone high and dry by any means. So entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship. I'm sure there's different flavors, but uh, everyone deserves support. Yeah. So where we focus on the startup uh, sector of entrepreneurship and we try to dive deep into that and really facilitate personal connections. There are other organizations in Kansas City that cover the, the wider range, the spectrum of, of entrepreneurship, one of which is Casey SourceLink. Um, they do a fantastic job of helping any type of entrepreneur, uh, whether they're Main Street, whether they're uh, you know small business, whether they're um, a, a startup as well, innovation led. So uh, if it's not for us, we'll point them in, in their direction. There's um, some other organizations as well that are doing some cool things. So we just make sure that we kind of pass off um, an individual who, who might not fit exactly what we're doing. In closing, Kansas City in five years will be what? Oh, man. This is such a tough question. I, I, I try to meditate on this stuff, and it's tough to know. Um, honestly, I think... I think Kansas City in five years will be the most connected startup community in the world. Okay, I'm putting out a big stump, I'm putting out a big flag there. And when I say connected, what I mean is that um, whether you're already part of the city, right? You live here, you're a resident, or whether you're someone visiting or you're someone who just wants to find out information from far away. As soon as you take a moment to plug in, we are going to make sure that you're connected to everything or the individuals that you need to be connected to. Um, I. For us, the power of a community is people and culture, right? And if we can b- help grow that thing and, and help uh, instill that into Kansas City and do a better job at growing those two things, um, then I think we've done a, a good job and we're on our way to a, um, a, a better Kansas City, if you will. And, man, I would love to see an IPO out of KC, right? If we're going to start talk about specific, like, tangible things, We've had a couple exit. I'd like to see a few more exits, maybe some acquisitions. But man, uh, there's a few few startups in Kansas City that I could see uh, hitting the markets. So KC in 2022 will be the most connected startup community in the world. 
In the world. There you go. In the world. We'll see if Matthew Marcus of the KC Startup Foundation is true or if he is false on that. Appreciate your time today, Matthew. It's been great. People can find you at kcstartupfoundation.org. A ton of great resources over there. Again, kcstartupfoundation.org. Matthew Marcus, appreciate the time. Thank you, sir. Great to talk with you. Absolutely.